Over here you see uh, incomplete penetrance, which is a different kind of uh, pedigree scenario, which sometimes the, the dominant trade, this is a dominant trade we're talking about here, and it's dominant because it's not skipping generations, or, or is it? Ooh. Now here's where it gets complicated. This trade seems to be skipping generations right here. So this trade seems to be skipping generations. So what is this? Is it, is it recessive or not? So what is going on? So that's the problem that we have. Now this gets tricky and confuses us. And that's the problem of this one. And I'm just throwing it out there because I don't know what they're going to throw at you in tests. So you got to make sure you understand that. Now when I see this, I jump to the conclusion it's got to be recessive because it's skipping a generation, right? It's not though. It's a dominant thing, and now I can I can I can prove it to you basically. Okay, this um, is a dominant trait. It's getting past the cross generations, but it's a trait that might not show up, even though it's dominant, because the environment is tuning it off. So sometimes traits are only present. Remember the epigenetics. Some traits traits only happen if a specific kind of environmental input activates them. So maybe. One of these people are, is actually supposed to have the trait, but was never exposed to the conditions that cause the disease. For example, depression has a genetic component, and it seems to be dominant that it passes across generations. And, and usually people that have depressive mothers have depressive childs and so forth. However, if this person was exposed to protective uh, situations, he may actually never, or she may never actually be, be become depressed and have a clinical depression, even though he may have genes that make him propensity for that. So because genes interact with the environment, sometimes the dominant genes do not show up in that generation, and you get what is called an incomplete uh, penetrance situation, where the genes do not show up in the pedigree, even though they should, and it cheats you into thinking this is a recessive trait. So you have to be careful when you see a pedigree like this because you can never be sure it's truly a recessive genotype that you're looking at. It could be incomplete penetrance. And so in order to tell the difference, you have to track it across several generations to see if there's not really a dominance pattern that's emerging in something that should be a recessive pattern. And so that, that's how you figure it out. It's not a recessive trait. You know, uh, eventually you're going to have in a, a situation that it's going to look like it's a dominant even though it's supposed to be a recessive trait, and then you know, oh wait, that is uh, incomplete permanence. So you have to track it. To truly know if a trait is recessive, you truly have to track it across many, many generations. That's basically what the warning that I wanted to give you guys about this. And so on this particular one, you can see that again, the pedigree I showed you in the beginning of, of this video lecture about pedigrees, and this time they're showing the, the carrier females, and so you can use it to decipher what's going on with the royal family and why the genes actually spread and hemophilia spread across the generations. So it's a good, a good way to practice and understand what pedigrees are all about. So I would pause the video and study for a little bit just to get an idea. And that's why there was so much marrying between cousins and things like that in this family that, uh, that the genes actually persevered across the family. And many generations of the family actually had hemophilic child, children, especially the males, all because Queen Victoria was originally a carrier of the gene. Now, here's another kind of pedigree that sometimes they throw at you. And in addition to that incomplete penetrance one, there's another one that can confuse students. And I want to try to make sure you don't get caught by that one. It's called mitochondrial inheritance pedigree. Now, let's see what is the pattern here. Look, this mother here has the disease, right? All the children have the disease because of that. Look how interesting. One, three, and five are children of one plus two, and all of them have have the disease, right? Again, this mother disease, all the children have the disease. This mother five over here has the disease, all the children have the disease. This mother does not have the disease, none of the children have the disease. This mother does not have the disease, none of the children have the disease. But this mother has the disease, both children have the disease. So it's like this. The mother has it, the children have it. What's going on here? This is a disease that's carried by only by whatever the mother's doing. Whatever the father's doing has nothing to do with it. And that's called mitochondrial inheritance pedigree. And in the next video, I'm going to be explaining what's going on over here. All right? See you guys then.